Hey there, Father Richard here. In a recent interview with Dr. Ralph Martin, I asked him why universalism is the greatest threat to evangelization today. I hope you enjoy his response and stay tuned as I unpack it after. Yeah, yeah Dr. Mar Dr. Martin, um, just building upon something you mentioned with, it's something I find that I'm constantly facing is this idea of universalism in which everyone's just going to get to heaven and so catholic spirituality is just kind of another you know pick your flavor of what you want and we're all going to get to the same place so if catholic spirituality is doing it for you you might as well just like try it out but if you know new age stuff is is uh is working for you then do that and i really find that um that's a big threat today for evangelization because if we believe we're all just going to get to the same place then where's you know where's the fire to to have difficult conversations we're just going to avoid any challenging conversations uh and i find that most especially like uh talking with people at the parish you know when they're with family members or loved ones like they don't want to break off those relationships so they just avoid difficult conversations and universalism seems to be the underlying heresy that's creating that culture yeah. how can people today overcome the heresy of universalism and effectively evangelize family members and loved yeah. ones well I, I would say if if priests would just preach on the lectionary as it comes around. You don't have to make a special effort to talk about hell. It comes around in the lectionary. And if you just don't avoid those difficult passages, those challenging passages, most priests avoid them. When they have a choice of, of picking one of the three, they don't pick the one that would really be challenging to, to our culture. They, they don't want to upset people. They don't want to kind of alienate their donors. They don't want to... Uh, have people get angry at them, you know, they, they, they don't want to upset people by telling people the truth. And, you know, every priest, every Christian is going to have to stand before the judgment seat of God. And the Lord's going to ask us, did you pass on faithfully what I revealed to you about what people have to do to be saved? And as un un unfortunately, there's lots of priests and lots of lay people that are not passing on faithfully the truth about what people have to do to be saved. And so they're, they're complicit in, in, in blessing people on their way to hell, you know, I mean, really, it's really, a, it's really a terrible situation. But, you know, for example, Matthew chapter seven, verses 13 and 14 comes around in the liturgy quite often, you know, you know, several times a year, uh, you know, and, and what, what Jesus says is broad and wide is the way leading to destruction. And many are traveling that way. Narrow is the door that leads to life, difficult the road and few there are finding it. Now, people are so familiar hearing that, it just kind of just flows over them. They don't even pay attention to what's being said. So we need to say, did you hear what Jesus just said? Did you hear what he said? That many people are drifting to destruction and the way that leads to life isn't something that you drift with the culture. You have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. You have to turn away from sin. You have to put your faith in Jesus. You have to obey him. And, and you know, you can go on and say, this is an isolated text. There's lots of texts in scripture. In Matthew's gospel, I took some young people through a Bible study. We found 65 different texts in Matthew's gospel. that either explicitly or implicitly talked about the eternal consequences of not paying attention to Jesus. So many of his parables, uh, you know, talk about, you know, the good fish, the bad fish, the weeds, the, the wheat, you know, the grain, the chaff, uh, even in those moving, you know, Last Supper, beautiful passages that reveal such intimate possibilities of union with Jesus. He says, you're the, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And the branches that bear fruit, my father will prune to bear more fruit. But the branches that don't bear fruit will wither away and be cut off and thrown into the fire. So uh, I don't know if you have this in Canada or not, but the United States lectionary now, sometimes for the Sunday readings they do, if you want to do a shorter reading, you know, mm -hmm. kind of you can leave out this. And sometimes they're leaving out the punchline of the parable. 
They're leaving out the weeping and gnashing of teeth in the outer darkness, you know. They're 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 leaving out the clear words about sexual morality. They're 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 leaving out things that they feel like would upset people. Now, sometimes when you've got a long, you know, genealogy, you know, yeah, you know, maybe shorter reading would be legit, but uh people are editing the word of God, you know. And 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 the last chapter of Book of Revelations, you know, says. Woe to anybody who adds anything to this word or takes anything away from it. You know, we want to really be in fear and trembling to reverence the word of God, you know, as it comes to us through the church. And, you know, the Catholic Church believes it's the inspired and inerrant word of God. You know, every time I talk about scripture now, I have to tell people what Vatican II actually says about how we're supposed to approach sacred scripture. In Constitution on Sacred Revelation, Section 11, it says, everything asserted by the sacred authors should be considered to be asserted by the Holy Spirit, by God, and to teach faithfully, firmly, and without error those truths which God wished to consign to the sacred writings for the sake of our salvation. So this is there for our salvation. This is there for our good. This is God's mercy reaching out to us, telling us the truth about what we must do to be saved. Don't believe the lies of the culture. You're a fool if you believe the lies of the culture. You're a fool if you drift along with the culture. You're going to head to destruction in this life, and you're endangering your eternal salvation. As Dr. Ralph Martin said well, there's the view of the culture, and there's the view of the church. The view of the culture is influenced by the devil. Now, if the devil wants you to go to hell, the two best things that he could do to convince you are first that hell doesn't exist, and if it does, pretty much no one's there. It's a great trick from the devil that he's influenced the culture. And so the culture itself says that broad and wide is the way that leads to heaven, and many find it. On the opposite end of the spectrum is the view of the church, which is influenced by Jesus Christ, revealed through tradition and sacred scripture. And Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 7 that broad and wide is the way that leads to destruction in many who find it. And the gate is narrow and the way is few that leads to eternal life and few find it. Jesus, out of his great love for us, warns us consistently in scripture about the real possibility of going to hell. If we have bought into the lie of universalism that the culture presents, influenced by the devil, we will have no missionary impulse for evangelization. Because if everyone's just going to the same place, then what does it really matter to have those awkward conversations about difficult Catholic Church teaching? But on the other hand, if we really believe the Church's teaching about the difficulty of, of finding salvation, then we'll have this great missionary impulse to evangelize and to have those difficult conversations to make sure that everyone we come across to can be brought to salvation through Jesus Christ in his holy Catholic Church. Due to our fallen nature, it is so easy for us to buy into the lie of universalism. Each one of us needs to uproot this lie from our hearts, root ourselves back in the truth revealed by sacred scripture, and allow our hearts to catch on fire once again with a missionary impulse to evangelize. Feel free to comment below about whether you think universalism is the greatest threat to evangelization today. I look forward to hearing your responses and thank you for watching. God bless.